Okay, it's now a few minutes after the hour, so let's get started. Hello, and thank you for joining us today for the Cited by webinar. My name is Anna Tolwinska, and I work on the member and community outreach team here at Crossref in our Boston area office. This webinar will provide an introduction and general overview of the service. Uh, for a more in-depth look, we, we will have a technical webinar next week. Um, I just wanted to mention a few housekeeping items to start. We will be recording this session and we will share it after the webinar so you don't have to worry about taking notes. Everyone is muted to minimize background noise um, and if you have any questions please submit them in the question window on the right of your screen and we will answer them after the webinar or actually my um, colleague Patricia Fini, who's our product support manager, um, has kindly offered to answer them throughout, so you might be getting an answer sooner than that. Okay, so in today's webinar, I'll cover the following topics, and hopefully at the end you will be, you will have a clearer picture of what the Cited by Service is all about. Uh, I will go over what Cited by is, give a quick overview, um, some stats and benefits, then I'll talk a bit about how it works, and we'll go over how to get started and touch upon best practices. Um, and of course, we'll have plenty of time for questions. So before I start describing what Cited By is, I'd like to give you a bit of background. So Crossref Cited By Service started in approximately 2007 so about 10 years ago, and like everything we do at Crossref, the services we create are based on what publishers need and uh, are based around collaboration. So Cited By was prompted by our members' interest in knowing how their research was being used by other publishers. We wanted to help publishers answer the question of who was citing their research. So without Crossref, this typically would include a lot of negotiation between publishers to get this data, but because Crossref is a community of publishers and we work collaboratively to make getting this data possible, it was much easier for publishers to accomplish this. So many of you may be wondering, why are we talking about it now? Um, we've launched it a long time ago um, and we sort of, um, we wanted people to know, um, more people to know that it exists and to take advantage of it. Uh, we seem to have a habit at Crossref of launching things and, not, and then not always um, shepherding them um, the way we should. So I just wanted to um, uh, reiterate that it's, um, it's here and um, anyone can uh, participate. Okay, so that's a bit of a background. Um, now let me describe what Cited By is. So Cited By service helps you look up the DOIs registered for research that has cited your content. Um, it allows you to share this data with your readers on your article page. So it helps publishers, editors, and authors discern who is citing their content and readers are able to see what articles have cited the article that they're currently reading. Um, other members will be able to see when you are citing their content. And because Crossref is all about reciprocity, Links are displayed on other publishers' websites, and that drives traffic to your website, and vice versa, and that is what we are all about. Okay, here we have a few stats that you may find interesting. Uh, we, have, we currently have over 509 publishers participating in Cited By. Um, over 32 million articles um, registered with Crossref have references deposited. And since we launched in 2007, we have 650 million cited by matches. Next, we'll move on to obligations and fees. Um, the good news is that there are no fees, but there are some obligations. Uh, we can't have it all, unfortunately. Um, cited by is a free service we offer to publisher members only. Um, so you have to be a member in good standing uh, to participate, which means uh, you're depositing metadata and you are paying your um, invoices. Participation in Cited By is optional, so you, don't, you do not need to participate, but you can. And currently, 
we um, only reference linking is required as part of um, your member obligations. So once you decide to participate, there are uh, some obligations like depositing your references. Um, and this is just a reminder that if you do deposit your references, you can also opt to make them open to the public. They are set to private by default. So if you um, deposit them and don't let us know, they will remain private. And you can let us know by emailing support at crossrep.org if you want to make them public. Another important reminder is that you can only look up cited by matches to your own content and not anyone else's. So currently only cited by participants can see who cites their content. This information is not available to other members or the public. Um, recently, however, we did add citation counts to our REST API. So citation counts show how many articles cite a particular article but do not provide links, um, they just provide a total number. So for example, if five articles cite your article, then the REST API would only show that the number five and that's it. Now that we know the cost and some obligations, you may be wondering about the benefits of cited by. Like why is it useful or what will you get in return for the effort you put into looking up the cited by matches? So, cited by counts and links equal more context for your readers. So when someone's reading uh, your article, um, they can learn what other articles cite that research. You can see how much your content is cited and by whom. Um, people can easily click the matches to go to the citing content for a richer user experience. Um, you can avoid creating bilateral agreements with thousands of other publishers which is one of the benefits that Crossref provides, um, the collaboration and the reciprocity. And also adding your references means our other members link to your content, which increases discoverability. And as always, more metadata in Crossref can build and sustain scholarly infrastructure. So it's a win-win for all. Benefits are great, but how does it actually work? So the steps are pretty straightforward. You deposit article reference lists. We match the metadata in the reference to Crossref DOIs to create a cited by relationship. You can then query our APIs and tools for specific articles to see its citations. If something hasn't yet been cited by another article, the query can be stored for future results, so you can keep checking because you know, cited by matches can happen at any time. And you can then display the matches on the articles page for your readers. Now let's dive in a bit into the process step by step. So in step one, Publisher A registers a DOI for Article X with the following metadata. So um, the title is Good Science, the author is John Smith. Next, Publisher B deposits metadata for Article Y and assigns a, a DOI. The deposited references for this article include the following, which is the previous article by John Smith. And finally, Crossref system establishes a cited by relationship between Article X and Article Y. And later, Publisher A sends a query to Crossref asking who cited their article, the first article that we saw um, by John Smith. And Crossref returns with the following answer and the DOI for Article Y and its metadata. So that's the process in a nutshell. Uh, we will share the slides so that you can go over this process on your own time um, if you may have missed something or if I went too quickly. So once you get the results, you can display them on the article page of your art on, on your article page. Here are a few examples of how different publishers display the cited by results. Sometimes hosting platforms or service providers providers do this for publishers, so you may need to talk to them about this. 
Crossref doesn't require publishers to display this information, so it's up to you, but we do encourage it as it is useful to the readers of your content. We also don't have specific guidelines on where to display it, so it's really up to you. This IOP article, for example, um, lists the cited by um, under the bibliographic information of the article next to the article and reference tabs. They also list the links to the articles that cited this article. Next, this Wiley article is very similar um, in its placement of the cited by link. Um, displays the cited by results next to the article and reference tabs, and it lists all of the other articles that cited this particular article and provides the links as well. This Cambridge University Press article lists the cited by on the left side at, towards the bottom, calling it cited by articles and Crossref. Once you click on that, it takes you to a secondary page where it lists the links that, of the articles that cited the article that you were reading. So hopefully, um, these few examples uh, gave you a better idea of how to display cited by results. Uh, now, for those of you that are thinking about starting um, or participating in cited by, here's some information on how to get started. So you can sign up by emailing member at crossref.org. You can decide if you want your references um, private or public. We will send you a confirmation and instructions. Then you can deposit your reference lists for each record at Crossref with the article metadata. You can query our API for a list of all DOIs citing an article. Um, and then you can display the cited by results on your website and enjoy extra traffic. So we um, encourage cited by participants to follow these best practices. Um, there aren't too many. So participation in cited by is optional, um, but it's encouraged um, because citations can happen at any time. Cited by links must be kept up to date. So you should check regularly for cited by links or if you perform an XML query, you can set the alert attribute to true and this means that the search will be saved in the system and you'll get an alert uh, when there is a new match. And once retrieved, cited by links should be included on your website. Um, and um, so if you follow these, um, you should be all set. So there are only three, so not too many. So as I mentioned earlier, um, at the start of the webinar, I wanted to remind you that next week, uh, my colleague Patricia Feeney will provide a more technical look um, at the Cited by Service. So if you are interested in learning more um, and haven't registered, please do. Or if you think um, one of your colleagues may be interested, please forward the link um, to them. And feel free to register even if you think you won't be able to make it um, because we do send out the recording and slides to anyone that registered. So if you can't make it, you can still get um, the recording and the slides. So um, I know that this has been a lot of information, um, but we do have um, additional links where you can uh, find information if uh, you may have missed something or if you wanted a review. Um, and um, of course, we are recording this webinar, so I'll be sending around the slides and the recording of this webinar. Uh, but you can find information on our website. Um, we have a cited by page. Uh, there's um, information uh, on our help document. We have help documentation on the support site. Um, we encourage you to follow us on YouTube. Um, we um, post all of our webinars on YouTube um, and we have other instructional videos there as well. So it, um, it's a great place um, 
to see, to learn more. Um, and if you have any questions um, uh, later on, uh, if not today, then please email us at feedback at crossroad.org. And um, we have some time for questions, um, so please submit them if you have any. And thank you so much for your attention today. <laughs>